Welcome back. We're joined by Cody Gibson fighting this weekend at UFC Vegas 89 against Miles Johns. Cody, what's up, man? Thank you for joining me again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, excited uh, about Saturday. So yeah, so this is this is your first fight since uh, Ultimate Fighter, right? Because you had a fight with uh, Davy Grant that was canceled, correct? Yeah, I was supposed to be fighting uh, Davy Grant tonight. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he got injured, and uh, so he was out. And in step Miles John. So uh, a little change up at the end, but uh, we're ready to go nonetheless. Absolutely. So, what, how are you feeling about him as an opponent? You know, he's got a good record. He's thirteen and two. You know, it seems like he's a uh, he's a he's he's hungry. He's ready to go. Like, what do you think of him? How do you think this fight's going to go? Uh, yeah, he's he's a solid fighter. You know, he's he's had a lot of success, a lot of wins. Um, throws a really heavy right hand. Uh, he's short and compact and explosive. You know, uh, we both come from a wrestling background, so that'll be yeah. interesting to see. Uh, how how that goes if we end up in grappling exchanges. Um, but yeah, I mean, we were training for Davey Grant, who's very dynamic and throws a lot of kind of crazy techniques and really had a, had a lot of weapons that we had to train to, to deal with. Um, and we went from that to fighting Miles Johns, who, you know, nothing against him. It's just stylistically, he's a little bit more, um, a little less dynamic. So, we know, you know, the things he's good at, the things he likes to do, uh, where some of his weaknesses are, and, and we'll try to exploit them. And, um, yeah, so it is a change of matchup. Uh, but, you know, we feel confident that we've, in a couple of weeks, we've watched film and come up with a good plan and uh, just got to execute. And that's it. How does that, in how does that impact a training camp when you're preparing for one guy and then just a few weeks to go, you know, a few weeks into your camp, you have to completely change your whole game plan. How does that impact it? Cause I imagine, like you mentioned that you you're doing a different stylistic approach, but just in terms of like, do you focus more on different things that you weren't prepared to focus on with to begin with, or do you sort of stay the course, just make some little tweaks here and there? Yeah, it's really just some changes in like, um, primarily like pad work and like uh what we're seeing from him things we need to avoid things we could exploit so it's kind of like the strategic side of things we make some adjustments but um i mean a big part of training camp is getting yourself physically uh as in shape as you can get and, and having good rounds and uh and that sort of stuff so none of that really changes you know we're we're coming in good shape and uh put a lot of emphasis on cardio and being able to push the pace uh and withstand that for 15 full minutes and, and set a pace that he can't keep, you know? And uh, so it really didn't, that didn't really change. Um, just a few, you know, strategic things that we had to adjust to. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're feeling good about it. Nice. Well, good luck, man. I'll be, I'll be watching you. I'll be rooting for you. One of my, uh, but I have to do a quick little housekeeping here really quick before we change subjects, you're having a baby and it's coming up pretty soon. Right. As I understand, like it's literally like this week or like you're, you're going to be fighting and going right back home. What, what's going on? Yeah. My wife is uh very pregnant right now. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, you know, keeping my phone close to me. You know, usually when I go into the gym, I put my phone in my duffel bag and don't get back to it until after training. But right now I've been hopping over every water break or something and check in and make sure I didn't get a yeah. missed call. Um, and so, yeah, we're, uh, she's being induced next week if she doesn't have them before then. Right. And so we're hoping, uh, hoping he, he stays in there for another few days. And, yeah. uh, my parents are, are heading over there this weekend to kind of help in case something were to happen. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit, you know, nerve wracking. I, I don't want to miss the, the birth of my, my son, but, uh, so far so good. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and, uh, hope that's not the case. And, Hopefully we, uh, you know, the plan is to go get a big win, a big performance bonus, and then uh, take it home to her and and my soon to be uh, son. Yeah, let's uh, let's get that bonus. You know, get some because those cribs they're not they're not cheap. I know from experience they're not cheap at all. All that stuff is especially as they get older. You're just throwing out clothes. You're buying new ones anyway, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be spending some money. Um, well, congratulations, man. I'm happy for you. Um, how you know? I'm just curious how this. I've always wondered this about fighters when you're when you're raising a child. How do you explain fighting to a kid? Because you have to install you have to install certain like morals and values and judgment calls in kids, right? when you fight professionally, but then you also have to tell them like, don't get into fights. How do you explain that? How do you reconcile that when you're sort of teaching your kid? 
Well, right now I just have two daughters. Um, and they're okay, very, right. uh, they're very, I mean, they're, they're into athletics, but they're, they're girly, you know, yeah. and they're, they're not, they go to the gym with me pretty frequently, but they're not like looking to, looking to strap on the gloves anytime soon. So right. I would like to get them into some jujitsu as they get a little bit older, uh, just for the self-defense kind of protection part of it. But, um, yeah, it's not a career path I'm choosing for them. I mean, if they really wanted to do it, I guess I would support whatever they wanted to do, but it's not something I'm pushing them to. Um, so it's a little bit easier with them and with my son. I mean, yeah, it's going to be, I mean, I, even with my daughters, I approach it like this is a sport. Um, that's the way I explain it to them. The same as you have softball practice or you have basketball practice and you play a sport. Uh, daddy plays a sport. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit more dangerous, a little rougher. Yeah. But, uh, if you ask my wife, there's, uh, there are fights on, on my television, in my house pretty much 24 seven. So, uh, they're pretty accustomed to seeing fighting and uh yeah they don't ever really care when i get beat up or when i my face is all black eyes and cuts and stuff they're always right. just like like they don't seem to like it doesn't bother them so that's good um i gotta ask you uh i know you get asked about this a lot so i wanted to throw this your way you know obviously your ultimate fighter coach michael chandler he's been waiting for this conor mcgregor fight for a long time mcgregor just announced that it's supposed to be happening this summer do you do you feel like this fight's actually happening are you uh do you feel like mike's been kind of been waiting too long he's been forced to wait too long how do you feel about this situation and do you think this fight's actually going to happen yeah when when it you know i when the UFC announces it is when I'll believe it's happening. Uh, I know McGregor has been making a lot of rounds in the press right now with uh, his movie coming out and uh, talking about the fight happening this summer. So I, I don't really know what to think at this point. I hope it happens. You know, I hope, I hope it does. I think if it doesn't happen by this summer, Mike needs to move on at this point. Um, but he is waiting, looking for this big payday. And I think, you know, you've been waiting this long. You gotta, you gotta give it to him. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that what Connor's saying is true and that they're going to be able to get in there this summer. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one to see for sure. I was just saying on a podcast last night, like if Michael Chandler deserves this fight at this point, right? I mean, it's like, he's just, he's, he's kind of played it perfectly the whole way. He's done everything right. And it's like, if he doesn't get it, it would be pretty disappointing. I think at this point for him. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. He's waited long enough, you know, it's time to yeah. make it happen and, He's got to be Connor's opponent, first opponent back, and uh, I think it's a good it's good for both guys. I think McGregor's confident that he could beat Chandler his style, and I think Chandler's getting McGregor at the right time where he's got a a, a real shot to go in and and uh, put put Connor's career uh, away. So uh, that's what I think is going to happen. So nice. that's uh, that's what I'm rooting for at least. Well, you may, you know, he's got other career options apparently because you just mentioned his movie Roadhouse. Now I have to ask you: Will you be watching Roadhouse? Will you be? Will you be checking out the movie? Yeah, I'll probably watch it. Um, I've heard it's very CGI ish. Okay. Uh, I saw some some stuff about the fight scenes that they've released are very CGI ish. CGI, that's what it's called. Yeah, that right? makes sense. Yeah. Um, sure. So we'll see, but. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be tuning in. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is a good actor, so uh, we'll see. Absolutely. All right, so I got to end this way. I'm going to put you on the spot here. You are a history teacher, so you're right on uh, history? I taught history for a number of years, and that's when I had my degree in, but I'm actually, I switched over to teaching PE now. Okay. In lieu, in lieu of a fight career kind of Makes taken sense. back off. So, But I'll, I'll find my way back into the history classroom uh, before it's said and done. All right, I'm going to quiz you with five history questions, and I want to see if former history, if, if history teacher turned UFC fighter Cody Gibson can answer these basic history questions. Are you game? It'll be really quick. Sure. All right. This is, I'm going to start off easy. When was the Declaration of Independence written? Well, it was signed in 1776. So I don't know if it was written in the prior year or whatever a, but 1776 is what i'll say it's sort of a trick question because it was uh it was written on july 4th but it was signed on august 2nd sort of a trick question but it is yeah 1776 july 4th what four presidents are on mount rushmore what four u.s presidents are on mount rushmore um good question washington that's one on rushmore yeah lincoln yeah that's two Who else is on mount rushmore 
What else would be on Mount Rushmore? This is the kind of history. I'm not like a political science guy. Okay. But uh, but let me let me let me take a stab at it. Washington, Lincoln. Who else would be on Rushmore? Um, one of the first four presidents is also on it. Man, you're cut, catching me on weight cutting. Right. Days, no, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, who is the four? Uh, well, there's Je- Jefferson is one of them, one of the first. Oh, uh, yeah. The fourth one I was surprised by. It's Theodore Roosevelt. I didn't even realize that. That's what Roosevelt. I was. I was thinking maybe it was Teddy Roosevelt, but then I was yeah. thinking time wise, it's. But then I think about when they built Rushmore, and it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right. I saw I saw a documentary once on the on the building of Mount Rushmore. It's pretty wild uh, how they built that thing. Uh, I know. That was pretty pretty People intense. Think that there's like secret tunnels in there and stuff like that. Yeah, there's all yeah. sorts of weird conspiracies. All right, uh, this is my last one. This is a little tougher. The United States bought Alaska from which country? Russia. Okay, that one wasn't that tough then. All right, where did Albert Einstein live before moving to the United States? Germany. All right. What was the name of the series of programs and projects President Franklin Roosevelt enacted during the Great Depression? The, the New Deal. All right. Now, last question. What history teacher turned UFC fighter beat Miles Johns at UFC Vegas 89 on March 23rd, 2024? Cody Gibson. Let's go, Cody. Good luck this weekend. I'll be rooting for you. Thank you so much for joining me, bro. Thanks, Jesse. Always good talking to you, man. Take care. Absolutely. Hey, good luck. Okay.